A feature that's often overlooked in Logic Pro for iPad are the lessons. And with the launch of Logic Pro 2.1, there are two new lessons. So I thought to showcase how cool these are, let's do them together. Let's go. To get to the lessons right here from your new project screen, you can see we've got featured lessons and we can scroll left and right to find them or we can tap on show more and see all of the lessons, the ones we have in progress, the getting started, the browsing for sounds and loops, edit and arrange, record, create with session players, make drum beats, create with live loops and work with plugins. Now, as much as I'd love to say that all you need to do is watch my videos to learn how to use Logic Pro for iPad, these lessons are actually super handy. They don't dive into all all of the details, but in terms of getting started with these features, they're fabulous. So let's jump in and see what's new in 2.1. So we're here under get started and we're going to tap on this one to start the lesson. You can see here, it's about a four minute lesson and here's the five things that it's going to cover. Let's tap on start lesson. The lesson downloads and here it is, we get a guided tour. So there's the intro. You can hit pause if you wanna read every word. I'm just going to do what it tells us so we can learn what's new. To go to our next stage, we just tap the right button here and you can see we've gone to a number two and the cool thing is that Logic Pro actually will highlight where we need to go with this little grey highlight so it's always really simple to see where you need to go next. So we're going to open the plugins and tap add audio effects and it tells us to scroll down and go into reverb and then Quantec Room Simulator. And you'll know you're done because nothing's flashing now. So you know that you can now hit the arrow to go to the next part. Once again, to open this in the detail view, we need to tap on the plugin. And from here, we can choose from the QRS or the yardstick and we can start playing with the different parameters. And next, Again, it wants us to tap on the plugins button. And now it's going to show us the new reorder mixer channel strips. So we're going to tap on the mixer and you can see now this little animation is actually showing us what it wants us to do is to tap and hold and drag across to here. The other cool thing here is it's telling us about the multi select button, which I'd kind of forgotten about and I didn't show in my video. So we can select multiple channels and move them all at once. So if we select these three, we can actually tap and drag them all at once, which is pretty darn cool. Once again, it wants to show us the next thing. So it's telling us to tap the mixer button. Now here it's telling us which track to choose. We'll choose this uh, bass track and then hit the plugins button again. And once again, it's showing us how we can reorder these plugins. So it's saying grab Chroma Glow and move it over to the side. So we'll do that. We'll tap and hold and drag across. And you can see here that I showed this in my other video, which you can check out in the description. I go into more detail, but we used to have to go into edit mode to move the plugins when, whereas now you can do it right here in your regular mode. Once again, tap on plugins. And now we're gonna jump over to the browser over here on the left and look at the add sample folder option, which is one of my new favorite ones of all. I show this in detail in another video and you guessed it, it's in the description. Once again, we're getting more information here about how to add additional folders. We tap there and then we tap there. And to delete a folder, we tap and hold and we've got the remove folder option. Let's tap the browser to get rid of that one and tap on the editor button. And here it's showing us another change that the perform again button has now been renamed to regenerate. And there you go, that's lesson one done. From here, as you can see, it's telling us about the other lesson that's new, which is the intro to the Quantec Room Simulator. We're going to do that next. And it also gives us a link in to the Logic Pro user guide. So if you want more information, you can check that out. Or of course, watch more videos here on the channel. But let's now dive in to this next lesson. We can get straight to it by tapping here. Once again, we're going to start the lesson. This one's a bit more in depth. This is a 15 minute lesson. So we're going to jump in and take a look. Once again, if you want to read these panes, you can either do the lesson with me or you can hit your pause button and take a look. You can see this one's going to be a lot more involved because there's 24 different things to do as opposed to just nine in the last one. So let's hit the next button and get started. So in this lesson, we've been given a project. The first job is to listen to the project and then we're going to add different reverbs using the Quantec Room Simulator. So let's take a listen to this song. So it now wants us to solo the clap by expanding out our drums here and uh, tapping the solo button here on the clap track. Now we're going to dive into the plugins area and there's our Quantec Room Simulator ready to use. We're gonna open it up in details view by tapping right on the plugin. 
And we get a handy reminder here about how to resize. So we can tap on this button and we can drag it to whatever size we want it to be. And we get a little information here about the two different Quantex room simulators that we have here in Logic Pro. So here we're learning about how to adjust the room size. So let's play this clap and turn this one up to hear it in a larger room. And you hear you get a lot more reflections the larger you set the room. And now we're learning about the reverb time dial here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to play this and turn the reverb up. And it does mention there that the reverb is actually dependent on the room size. So you can get longer reverbs with larger rooms. Makes sense. So let's play this and dial up the reverb. Next is reverb delay. So this is the amount of time between the original sound and the reverb coming back. So again, we're going to play this one and show this as a really short delay and then leave it with a longer delay. Now we're looking at the reverb time multiplier, and this one's a bit more complex, so I'm going to read directly here from the lesson. The reverb time multiplier adjusts how long the reverb lasts across different frequency bands. You can use it to match, shorten, or lengthen the reverb time relative to the time set by the reverb time parameter. To blend the reverb tail with the mix, set the low point to 0.63 and the high point to 1.6. So we're going to grab this one and drag it down, and grab this one and drag it up. Take a listen. And we also have the reverb level here. So it's telling us to come out and unsolo so that we can hear this in the rest of our project. Come back to our plugin and let's dial up the reverb level so that we can hear how much we are adding. So yeah, you could definitely go a little bit much with this. Okay, now time to solo the vocal track. So we'll tap on the plugins button to come back here. Let's find the vocal track. We'll collapse down these ones and uh, there it is. So we'll tap on the vocal track and we'll hit the plugin button. And once again, we'll jump in to the Quantec Room Simulator. We're going to once again solo this vocal, come back to our plugin and take a listen. You've got some nerve, you got some this time it wants us to take a look at the Quantec Yardstick version instead. So we're now looking at the reverb density here, which it says helps us, especially in large rooms for those reverb tails. So let's hit the vocal here and we'll drag this one up and take a listen to the change. You've got some nerve, you got some now with the yardstick model, you can see here that we can change the frequency and then actually adjust this with the reverb time multiplier. So we're going to drag this across as it's telling us to do here and then drag it on down so we can set it at whatever frequency we want. You've got some nerve. And again, with the low frequency, we can adjust this one by bringing it across and it's saying do this to 250 hertz here. And then we can reduce this one down as well. So you can make some pretty complex kinds of changes here using the yardstick model. And once again, if we unsolo, we can bring this back into our mix and adjust the reverb level. All right, time to check out the arpeggiated synth. So we'll come back here, we will find this arpeggiated synth, solo that one and jump back into our plugin. So it looks like we're going to explore the freeze function here. It's told us to get set up, which we've already done. And as it says here, it's going to create a freeze of the reverb. So the tail is going to stay in there and this is going to give us that real atmospheric kind of sound. Let's just listen to this without the freeze. And now let's hit that freeze button. And it goes on until we turn it off. Ah, and there's an add here as well, so we can add more snapshots to freeze, so we can build up layers of reverb as we play back the track. That's uh, pretty cool. Let's uh, have a little play with it, shall we?
This is going to be a dream for folks that love to play around with those long tailed atmospheric reverbs. And we can get rid of all of that by hitting this clear button. That's going to clear off all of those uh, freezes that we've just added in. And now back to the QRS. Right, we're looking at the enhance function here, which says that it uh, creates a dense reflection cluster from the input signal, adding spatial effects instead of traditional reverb. Ideal for short ambience or gated reverb on drums. Nice one. So it's asking us to go and put this on a drum. So let's do that. So it's suggesting the rim is one to use here. So let's solo the rim and come back to our plugin. So let's hear it without the enhance first. And now with the enhance enabled. So yeah, you definitely get that quicker, shorter kind of sound. So that could be very cool again for creating those gated snares and the like with your drum sounds. And there we go. All it's telling us now is to explore the history of the Quantec. You can jump in here and I highly suggest you read about its creator and the history because Apple basically spared no effort or expense to get this set up and here in Logic Pro for us. So that is the Quantec Room Simulator lesson. Now that we're done, we can jump out. And you can see here that we've got the these two new lessons ticked off because they're complete. There you have it, the lessons here in Logic Pro for iPad. Now, do they replace your favorite Logic Pro YouTube creator? I hope not, but they're definitely a great way to just get started and have some guided lessons right here on your own iPad. Thanks for watching this one. If you'd like to learn a heap more about using Logic Pro for iPad to create, record, and release your best music, check out the other videos in the description, and I'll see you next time.